Infrastructure bill, uh, 1.2 trillion. It's interesting. Some of the media is reporting it as 550 billion, 1.2 trillion dollars. Um, about 550 billion in new spending. So the rest is kind of reallocating and shuffling things around. Um, it was supposed to be uh, revenue neutral. So initially, Biden had proposed increasing corporate tax, but he couldn't get enough support around that. He couldn't get Republicans to vote for it. So uh, he, he uh, did away with that. Um, instead, they are, this is what they're doing, basically. They're basically pretending that it's uh, revenue neutral. That's it. It's just, they basically are fantasizing. They're creating an alternative universe in which it's, carb it's revenue neutral. And they're moving ahead with it. And Republicans are fine with that because Republicans don't really care about deficits. You know, so it's just pretense. A big part of, of the, the way they're pretending is like they're saying, hmm, there's a bunch of money from COVID stimulus that hasn't been used. We'll use it for this. But wait a minute, the, the, the COVID stimulus was not revenue neutral. It was deficit enhancing. And they have a bunch of other things like that. that oh, we'll get to the crypto stuff in a minute, but uh, the crypto stuff is, is scary and, and, uh, and, and useless and stupid. Anyway, let's talk about what's in this thing. We've got $110 billion for roads, bridges, and major infrastructure projects. It's going to be interesting to see how many of those bridges go to nowhere. You remember the bridge to nowhere? Last time we built a lot of bridges, there was a bridge to nowhere. That was, I think, in Obama's stimulus package. Roads to, I don't know. Do you really think this money is going to go to, like, building a tunnel between, I don't know, Orange County and L.A. so we can actually travel or actually be used to build roads that people use? I doubt it. A lot of roads to nowhere. Or lo roads to somewhere that nobody wants to go to. Uh, the states will be able to decide how to use this money. So we're basically going to shift the cronyism from the federal government to the state government. And the state will have everybody, everybody lobbying, construction companies, asphalt companies, local, uh, local governments. Uh, everybody's going to be lobbied to get a piece of this. I have a feeling that the cost a building a mile of road or a mile of highway is going to go up significantly. Or oh, a bridge. A lot of this is going to bridge. $40 billion. $40 billion. Man, you could fix a lot of bridges with $40 billion. $40 billion are going to go to, um, to repairing, replacing, and rehabilitating bridges. Now, I read you a report from the Civil Engineers of America saying that or I guess a, a, a critique of that report, saying that, you know, the infrastructure in the United States is not that bad. <laughs> Bridges are not falling apart. Yeah, there's some, and, and local government should take care of it. State government should take care of it. And the way to fund these things, what should be the way to fund these things? If the government was going to do it, what would be the way to fund it? Gasoline tax and tolls. You tax the people who are going to use it. It's the closest you get to fee for services. If I'm going to fix this road, or I'm going to fix roads in, the state, in a particular state, raise the gasoline tax in the state. But no, the Democrats insisted that it not be a use tax because they don't believe in that personal responsibility thing. You pay for what you use. They don't believe in any of that stuff. Okay. They want... Us, people like me, well, not me, but you, who don't live in a state, who don't use the bridge, who don't use the road, to pay for whatever they want you to pay for. It's, it's not, it's, it's truly, it really gives you insight into their egalitarian nature, this idea that we don't have, we don't raise use taxes when, it, it, when we want to build something like, like roads. Best Fed Hank says, here's a taste, just a five-minute rant on Trump he wants. Uh, he put 50 bu bucks on that. All right. I, I mean, I still expect 100 when I do the rant. I'm trying to figure out where to fit it in, right? 
Maybe infrastructure is not a bad place to fit it in. We'll get to it. Um, so $40 billion in bridge repair. Um, we've got $1 billion on reconnecting communities. That's where uh, communities have been divided by highways and other infrastructure. And uh, I don't know, you build tunnels under the highways, bridges over the highways, so we connect it. Uh, God. It also going to fund planning, design, demolition, and reconstruction of street grids, parks, and other infrastructure. Can you imagine the, the, the cronyism that this is going to entail? Can you imagine the, the, the push-pull, the, 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 the other, the poor peddlers, they're going to go in there trying to grab a piece of $1.2 trillion. I mean, even just a tiny sliver of $1.2 trillion is a lot of money, more money than I'll ever have. They say 20% of the nation's highways and major roads are in poor condition and 45,000 bridges. Again, bullshit, all excuses to, to get this money out there. All excuses. You know, where's this money going to go? It's going to go to contractors. It's going to go to unions. It's going to go to state coffers. It's going to go to job creation. It's going to go to high wages. I mean, Ayn Rand talked about the aristocracy of pull. A bill like this is just perfect for the Aristotle of aristocracy of Paul. They just, they just spend, spend, spend all of our money. All right, we are past four hundred bucks. So thank you all. You all stepped up. You all got that really nicely. We need to get to you know at least six hundred, at least six hundred tonight to to start catching up to where we need to be for the month of August. We don't want the month of August to be below. Um, the, the normal kind of average kind of uh, revenue generating month on Super Chat. All right, $39 billion to modernize public transit, right? Uh, much of that is going to go to, uh, or a significant portion of that is going to go to Amtrak. And by the way, Amtrak, they're going to change the purpose of Amtrak. So Amtrak used to have as its mission statement to try to make money. They've given up on it. Amtrak has never made money. So they're basically abandoning the idea of Amtrak making money, and now it's just going to serve you. The whole purpose now is going to be serve you, because if they make money, they can't serve you, or they won't serve you. It's not primarily a serve you kind of thing. It's um, $39 billion to modernize private transit. 40, uh, 39, 49, um, no, wait a minute, $66 billion. Oh, no, $66 billion. This is an addition. Another $66 billion in passenger and freight train. Why does the U.S. government need to invest in freight trains? Isn't there like, aren't the freight companies pretty private? What is it about? Ah, I mean, talk about cronyism. The train companies are going to get a big chunk of sixty-six billion, and they're going to get better lines, and they're going to get, and then, and then the left is going to say, see, see, the only reason we have good trains in America is because the government invested in them. We think we should get a share of the profits. <sighs> Broadband. 65 billion. 65 billion to improve the nation's broadband infrastructure. I don't know, isn't Elon Musk putting satellites into the sky to improve the global broadband infrastructure? Like, I in Puerto Rico have great broadband. We're enjoying it right now. Yeah. Don't stop, please. But no, the government has to step in. $65 billion. By the way, Elon Musk is going to get some of those $65 billion because if he can show that some of the satellites he's putting up there to provide internet to poor people, to people generally, if, if poor people use it, the government will give him money. They will subsidize it. $65 billion to provide internet to, for bridges that go nowhere, highways that go, you know, sit for, for rural places. And this will allow people to work from home, from anywhere they want. So it's good, right? This is how they're using your money. You know, broadband is a profit, profitable business. I, let me just say this. 
One aspect of this was defeated, which is so good. In the initial proposal that Biden made, they were going to start up publicly, not publicly, government-owned businesses to provide broadband and compete with private businesses. Compete with private businesses. Here, instead of doing that, and, and, they, and, they, and the, the left is furious that they're not doing this. They want public entities to compete with the private sector. Uh, here, what they're doing is they're just basically subsidizing the private sector. It's raining money, but not in my direction. I need to go. I should return to civil engineering, which is my profession from two, three lifetimes ago. And uh, I should go and do some construction and, and get a piece of this. this. This sounds really lucrative. Airports, ports, and waterways. Oh, wow. They were only getting like $17 billion for ports and $25 billion for airports. Like, that's where I think they put a lot more money. Again, why? Privatize the airports? Let them make money? That would give them an incentive to be nice? And then $7.5 billion for low-emission buses and ferries. That's good. That's good. I don't know where the electricity will come from. Another $7.5 billion to build a nationwide network of plug-in electric vehicle chargers. Why isn't there a profit motive to do that? If we're all going to be driving electric cars, you'd think that the private sector would want to build this plug-in electric vehicle chargers. God, the amount of corruption that's going to be here, the amount of waste that is going to be here is just unimaginable, unimaginable. Oh, and then there's, we haven't even reached power and water systems. $65 billion to rebuild the electric grid. $55 billion to upgrade water infrastructure. $50 billion on top of that. I mean, the $50 billions are just being thrown here left and right. We'll go towards making the system more resilient, protecting it from drought, floods, cyber attacks, and that cyber attacks. Again, how successful do you think they're going to be at that? $21 billion to clean up Superfund and brownfield sites. Haven't they been investing tens of billion dollars to do that for decades? Decades now? How this will be paid for, right? They're going to add $350 billion. Uh, the, the CBO said that this is going to add $350 billion to the deficit. Congress said, ah, we don't agree with the CBO. So how, are they gonna, how do they pretend they're going to raise money for this, right? Um, COVID relief funds, I said that already. Um, they're going to auction some uh, spectrum, which they're going to use for this, but they were going to auction the spectrum anyway, so it, it, that's super cheating. Uh, let's see. They're going to have super fund fees that they're going to raise $50 billion from. And, have, uh, and they're changing the tax reporting requirement for cryptocurrencies. Now, they claim to be getting 20-something billion from the cryptocurrency um, uh, tax reporting requirement. So here's the thing. The crypto community is going nuts over this. Basically, what the bill says is if you're a cryptocurrency broker, it doesn't define broker. Indeed, its description of broker is very broad. You have to send into the tax authorities every transaction, every client that transacts in more than $10,000 over crypto. Now, why would the authorities want this? To make sure all you crypto traders are paying your fair so-called fair share of taxes. This idea is they're going to collect 20 plus billion dollars from all the taxes that they haven't collected because people have been not declaring their gains from crypto because now the brokers will have to declare it. The problem is that what this is going to do is going to load up the whole crypto system with bureaucracy. They can have to create accounting rules, reporting rules, reporting protocols for everything. 
anonymity goes out the window because every transaction, $10,000 or more, has to have the names, addresses reported to the IRS. Crypto community is going nuts. They lobbied heavily to get this excluded. As a consequence, uh, there was an amendment to the bill proposed to change it. Uh, that amendment failed. The bill is going to the House of Representatives as is. What this will mainly do is move most cryptocurrencies offshore. All it will do is destroy jobs, take away business, and move the whole thing offshore. So they're ne never going to see the $20 billion they think they are. They're, they're dreaming. They're dreaming. So this is where we are. This is where we are. Oh, more savings are going to come from delaying a Trump administration rule about Medicare and Medicaid. How drugs are priced and paid for in Medicare and Medicaid. They're delaying it until 2026, and that counts as a saving. They also are predicting that the infrastructure bill itself will generate $56 billion in economic growth, which is taxable, and that'll generate revenue, right? 33% return on investment, they expect. 33% return on investment. All right, now that is nuts. Um, the return on investment on this is probably going to be negative given the efficiency with which the money will be deployed, given the efficiency of choosing infrastructure projects, they're not going to be chosen based on production or productivity. If it gets any positive return on investment, if you can even calculate it, it will be very low, but it would much more likely to be negative. The whole thing is a, is a it's just mythology and, and pretend and fantasy economics and fantasy politics that everybody buys it. And I don't know, 20 Republicans voted for this or 19 Republicans voted for this. Um, it's just disgusting. And of course, and here you go, uh, best friend Hank, just for you. And of course, this has been a bipartisan issue from the beginning. Right? Trump came out to office in 2016 advocating for an infrastructure bill. He wanted to spend 2 to $3 trillion on the infrastructure bill. Indeed, his major complaint about this bill is it's too small. It's not big enough. I mean, what Trump did to the Republican Party is it made it a leftist party when it comes to economics. It made it a party of central planning. It made it a party of industrial policy. So why is it the role of the national federal government to spend trillions of dollars on infrastructure when that infrastructure is best spent by the people who actually use the infrastructure, ideally private, but if it's not private, then it should be the states. Why not use things like gasoline taxes to raise the revenue for it? But Trump made it so that it's completely acceptable for, and, and he did required, I think, even though Trump was against this particular bill, for Republicans to rally around an infrastructure bill because if, if Trump wasn't against an infrastructure bill, then it must be, this must be good. And the Trump supporters all love this kind of stuff. This is the government doing good things. How? Where? It's how... The American people, particularly the American people who used to be members of the Tea Party, who used to be limited government conservatives, who used to be fiscal hawks, cared about deficits. What Trump did is he basically eradicated that point of view from the Republican Party. He, 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 he basically made it unacceptable to hold those views. To be a Trump Republican is to be a big government Republican. It's to be a Republican who believes in government intervention in the economy, government intervention in trade, government intervention in infrastructure, government intervention in 
drug pricing. You remember all the bills about drug pricing? One of them, they're just delaying right now. And of course, he committed. He committed in 2016. He committed time and time again not to touch entitlements. How are you going to cut deficit spending? How are you going to cut the deficit? How are you going to get government limited if you can't touch entitlements? He was going to save entitlements. So if you stand up today and say, no, we need to change entitlements, well, the, the, the pro-Trumpers are not going to support you. If you're going to say government shouldn't be spending $1.2 trillion when we're running massive deficits on infrastructure, for that matter, on anything else, you're not with the program anymore. Government is the cure for problems. If you worry about deficits, why? No Republican has worried about deficits since, 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 since somebody remind me, since Calvin Coolidge, maybe? Certainly not Bush or Trump. Where is, where is this free market, right-wing free market um, support going to come from? For support for the free market going to come from? It's not going to come from Trump. It's not going to come from Trump supporters. It's not going to come from, yeah, Goldwater. Thank you, Tom. I, I was thinking of somebody. No, Reagan didn't care about deficits. Reagan supported massive deficit spending. Deficit grew dramatically under Reagan. In spite of the fact that tax revenues grew under Reagan when he cut taxes, so the Laffer curve actually worked, he managed to approve and to sign spending bills that were greater in their growth rate than the growth that he had generated in tax revenues. Yeah, I mean, a few Republicans voted against the infrastructure bill more because they're going to vote for anything against anything Democrats propose. But a number of Trump loyalists, like Lindsey Graham, voted for it. The Republican Party has been emptied from its free market advocates. The free market advocates don't come anymore and don't appear on stage anymore at um, the conservative conferences. No free market will run for president. It's all about social issues, and it's all about granting the left, granting the left, the high ground when it comes to economic policy. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder... Please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share. And uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? 
So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.